designs of the head itself. So, uh, this is where we stopped, right? This is uh, lesson 06, start. And basically, what happened now that we've done this to the leg is, since the leg of a feline is generally just a little bit more towards the back, a little bit thinner, we sort of lose a little bit of our proportions. Now, that just means that we have to move everything a little bit forward slightly. Now, if you're using symmetry, then you're fine, like me. So we're just going to make everything a little bit longer, okay? And as far as the arm goes, uh, I'd like to change this up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, sort of add the shapes of the arms here. Let's go ahead and inflate stuff smooth it out and we can do the same thing that we did on the foot with a few changes so I would like a very tiny little pinky something different that we can play around with so again mask pen paint that on there go with the snake hook and just do this small little pinky let's invert that mask come back here and remember what I said what you can do is you can pull something out right you can sort of create a knuckle by going up and then you can go down. Now, as you can see, the snake hook doesn't really work that way in our favor. So what we're going to do is redynamize this and then just do it by hand. So now I can just inflate this bit, inflate this bit. And we're trying to run away a little bit from our animal roots as uh, as they were. and. While it's a very good starting point, and we're probably going to use a lot of it for the face, we still want something different. I still want something that is going to evoke, you know, just be more evocative, be different, you know, be a mix of things. So this is what I'm, I'm coming to, and I'm sort of liking this idea. So again, mask, pull it out with the snake hook. Don't have to do much to it right now you can just dynamesh it and you can see that every time you pull something out technically speaking it's adding more polygons to our model and uh, that just makes the dynamesh go a little bit more slower that and you know sometimes when uh, recording uh, is going on uh, the computer tends to be a lot more you know in demand as far as the CPU goes and things like that so if you see some slowdown don't worry about it just means that you are adding some more stuff. Now, let's go ahead and uh, pull out something. I don't know that we want to add. Let's see here. Let's move this towards the side. Okay. And then let's make sure that this is thick enough that we can mask that, invert that, snake hook it out. And like I said, I have no set design in my head. I'm not looking at an image. I'm just seeing where it's going to go. And to me, that's the exciting part. So inflate. But you can see how our little, um, just our little bit of uh, brainstorming at the start is really giving us a good direction, at least something to work towards. And I really like that. So something like this. You can see that the proportions start working themselves out a lot more now. Uh, still pretty long, but I guess we can shorten this a little bit. Again, turn perspective off if you want to see where everything is relating to the ground plane. So you can see we're a little bit off. But now we can sort of equalize that. And uh, I think we can add a little bit of a, of a thumb or something like that. Again let's be careful when working towards the middle of something here so something like this and uh, I think this could work and there we go we can smooth that out and uh, you can use the snake hook as sort of like a more emphatic uh, move brush or just go with the regular move and, and do your thing there so something like this here is interesting to me okay so just playing around with that now uh, I want to focus on this uh, area up here and I'm not really sure what I'm going for right now I think uh, I'm gonna add the shoulder muscle here really quickly 
and I'm going to add a bicep right there. And we can add the tricep as well, but we can make the tricep go all the way up top like the lion muscles are. So that's what I'm seeing. The tricep is sort of different looking on them, but they, they do have them, so we can do that. We can inflate these a little bit here. Let's get some muscles going. Something interesting to look at. Get those shoulder muscles sort of overlapping that. And we'll just keep going. So from the front, uh, this isn't quite what I want yet. So I'm going to make sure to change up the shape of this. And uh, we'll see what we can do. So I'm going to add a little bit of that hit for the bone. It's always important. It gives your uh, your your wrists and all your limbs sort of a little bit more natural, you know, natural naturality. Jeez, tongue twister. Makes everything more natural. Is what I'm trying to say. And then uh, we can just sort of smooth this out here. And I like this idea, just hybrid anatomy. I'm using the reference from the animal anatomy and then just using anything else that I can find here to get my way. So I'm going to cut this in here. I'm going to have too much time to work on that area. Probably do that off screen. Get the shoulder going. And then I want to sort of define what it is that I'm doing here for the forearm itself. So probably going to pull the elbow down this way here and just push everything more towards that direction. Now I've got plenty more refining to do, okay? Uh, by no means is this final, but you guys get the gist, right? It's just using the reference that I gathered, which in my case is lion reference, seeing what I like about it and applying it, and this is always going to come down to your personal taste and your ideas and your creativity. But grounding yourself in reality, having sort of a baseline, something to go back to if you're lost, I think is pretty interesting and important. So what I'm going to do is make this hand come a little higher up here and I can do something just like I did for the back, for the toes there. And again, I know these look like pretty squiggly and nothing major, but we can make these look a lot more dangerous at some point. I just think that we can maybe make the, those knuckles really different. And we can make them claws too, if that's something that we're, we're looking into, although I would reserve that for a later time. But the idea here is to just continue tweaking. The hands are looking interesting enough, and they're going to have something to support themselves with. That's important. Just a nice little pad for them to rest on. And then we can just make this area big. And maybe inflate this. Let me turn the floor off here, because we don't need to be sculpting through it to see what we're doing. So I'm just going to add a nice big pad for the hands here. And we can make something like webbing here for the for the hands that wouldn't be out of the question and then uh, if we zoom out it's definitely looking interesting I just want the right amount here probably gonna make a longer neck okay so let's move this head outward like this but I'm liking where this is going quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this a little bit more. I'm going to try to keep the changes to a minimum as much as I can. But if you want to know like 100% how to refine muscles and make things look very realistic, uh, I've already done a tutorial on creating elephant anatomy. The same principles are here. I always use the same tools. So it's just a question of uh, trying things out. Use your reference and I will go ahead and see seven uh, start. As you can see, I didn't do too, too much to it. I just sort of refined what I was working with. I decided that uh, when thinking about the hands themselves or the paws, 
I'm going to leave that for a separate lesson as well as the wings. So I went ahead and just removed them because the important part was just the body. So for now, we're all good. I want to start focusing on the face. Then we can start thinking about what we're going to do. So the idea that I have for the face is, uh, like I mentioned before, sort of a carapace looking thing like uh, armored or you know something different so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try my best to add something here that can be used as a weapon sort of if thrusted and the profile of the face uh, is going to be pretty much subject to change constantly but I'm gonna try to just make this area here a little bit thinner while still having some semblance of a chin. I'm not sure if I'm going to open the mouth right now, but looking at it, this is more or less where I want to go. As far as the eyes go, I want to make them up here. Sort of dig them down there. I'll use the standard brush here, and I'm just going to do my best here. My standard brush is pretty weird, so I'm going to go ahead and reset all brushes here so it goes back to being the default standard brush that we know and love. There we go. And I'm going to start by just adding that zygomatic bone and feeling the design out. I want a very aggressive looking design and whenever you're thinking about aggressive you want those sharp lines like this that you're seeing. And I do want a nice big jaw so that it can chomp on things and so forth. And this is probably one of those moments where we might be compelled to do something. Just inflate this here real quick. We might be compelled to do something like, say, up our Dynamesh resolution. So let's go ahead and go to Geometry. And let's try to go to 80 or 96. See what that gives us. Let's move something and then do it. And it's going to give us a lot more polygons to play with, and now we can think about design with a little bit more freedom. Now we're going to have a couple lessons here to try to get our bearings on the face. But you want to find your landmarks. So um, the nose would be here. And I'm looking to sort of add that feline looking nose, like so. So adding something like that is going to sort of either limit our options or open up our head to more ideas. So I'm sort of liking where this is going. And again, nothing here is going to be set in stone. But I do want to sort of look at that faceplate idea that I was talking about. Possibly with more volume here on the forehead. So something like a connected forehead might be interesting. I don't want to go too triceratops with this, but uh, I guess that that is one way of looking at it. So let me tone that back down. And again, we're exploring, so there's no right or wrong here until we find something that uh, we really, really like. And in my case here, I think what I'm going to end up looking for is some sort of saber tooth variation so that we can play around with a really large strong looking teeth I think that's going to give us something to really emphasize our design so using the trim dynamic here sort of trying to look for something very strong and I like the trim dynamic because it, it gives me all these lines to work with I'm gonna pull out the zygomatic bone a little bit like this sort of outside the face connect it this way and I'm most likely not going to make an open mouth I'm probably just going to make the teeth intersect as the separation between the mouth so just so you guys know so something like this probably is more where I'm looking for just want to be careful so that things line up properly And that's starting to look interesting. But like I said, we have time. And 
I am liking this sort of a jaw coming right up there. So I'm going to cut this in here. I'm going to make the jaw connect like so. Cut the Damien standard that way. And maybe look into something interesting here for the eye shape. Now a predator is going to have his eyes facing forward like this. So we want to do that. And I'm going to try to alter this so that the profile, like from the side, I'm liking where it's going, but from the front, not so much. So let's go ahead and think about this from the front here, just for a little while. Now I've considered something like horns, so possibly forward-facing horns like that, but I'm not sure that that's what I'm looking for. I also want to add his ears, uh, sort of that they're drooping down like that, so I think that's what we're going to go for now. So I'm going to trim dynamic this bottom part here just so I get a clear shot at this area. And then I can try to snake hook the ears down this way and that could add as a design element you know the sharp lines as well so that looks interesting at the very least and now let's try to maybe cut the insides of these ears so we know that they are ears so something like that will work for us although we may not want to attach it solo we want to have a little bit of a of a difference here, so here's what we can do. There we go. I can just attach it there, and then we can maybe make the mandible come beneath it, like so. Just adding some clay underneath the ear there, and I can dynamesh this together so that uh, it looks like the ear is actually finishing like it's connecting up here instead of at the bottom there and there you go so we can cut that off now I'll try to work on that a little bit later and now I'm just gonna look for the front of the face and what it could potentially give me So just changing that around. I definitely think we're going to add some very big teeth like this. I think that's going to be an interesting contrast to play around with. I want some really straight looking edges on this face. I'm very geometrically sound design here. So I'm going to try my best to add that. So smoothing that out made it a little bit better for me. And just add some more volume here. Make sure that this is interesting enough. And I, I like where this is going now. So maybe what we can do is make it hunt by sensory deprivation, I guess. We just make it blind? That might be interesting. Maybe it's blind, but... Well, if we're, if we're going to make it blind, then everything has to have a purpose, like I said. So we'd have to make some pretty big and thick nostrils for it to be able to smell. Those ears look nice, like they can hear a lot of things. So this might be going in the right direction. I like this. Uh, still plenty to be done. So let's stop here and let's continue in the next lesson. Uh, I'm liking this. Uh, what I want to do is I want to just sort of ignore everything else. So I'm just going to focus on the face for now. And uh, we'll see what we're going to get from there. So I was liking the mouth the way it was going. But I have an idea. Borrowing from our feline uh, friends here, maybe I can just add a mouth 
piece more or less like this. And then uh, we can sort of move the nose around until we get something that pleases us. Like I said, I want to focus on the uh, nice and sharp lines that we can get with this sort of a design. I still want to make teeth uh, coming outside of his mouth, so it's probably what we're going to do. I'm most likely going to throw this up here, and then like so. Move that chin out, and the ears themselves... We can make sort of interesting decisions with those. Again, this is different looking and interesting at the very least. So pretty large. And here we can definitely play around with this idea of the eyes either not being used or being very special. Again, not sure we're going to stick with this. The overall idea I like, but we may not stick with it. Not sure quite yet. Um, the one thing that I do want to do is try to elongate this snout a little bit. So I'm going to pull it straight down and like so. And then move just looking for that shape. So this is not bad. I'm liking this. I'm just still missing some sort of sharp features here on the face. So... Fill that out. Try to project that mouth forward a little bit. Liking the idea of the big nose. I think we'll definitely have to add teeth in order to make this look the way we want it. Because other than he, without teeth, it's not going to look menacing. I understand that part about it. But let's see here if there's anything that we can do about this area. Again, just playing around with some ideas. And the problem with uh, going a little bit too heavy on some details before it's time, like I did there on the eyes, is the geometry tends to stop obeying you. And that's not really good. We definitely want more control over what we're doing. So I guess the thing is, if I don't make these ears more interesting. Nothing's gonna really help us out. So this here is interesting enough. You can see it just with the move tool itself we can definitely play around with some things. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that zygomatic back and decide do we want eyes or not. Because if we want eyes, then we're going to have to add them and make them fairly irritated. And I think just the jaw needs to be bigger this way. Maybe push it down that way. I do like it from the front, though. And it is different which is a start. So maybe make this a very sensitive piece so we can, when we paint, we can do sort of like a very pink uh, inside. And I'm thinking this guy's going to be pretty dark skinned, dark red or something like that. So that's going to be interesting. I like this shape that we've got forming around here. But it's about time that we wrap the discovery part up and, and settle on something, I think. So I'm going to do a couple more tries here just on the face itself and uh, basically refine the mouth area here. 
which is still, I guess it's the biggest part, it's the part that I'm least comfortable with, is still the mouth. So let's try and just give it some sharp edges. So some triangular shapes here. And then inflate them together. Like so. So you can see that sometimes, you, while you may like something, it may not function with the entirety of the design. That doesn't mean you have to give up on it completely. But you can see that sometimes there's a better solution for something to look that way. And I definitely like where this is going a lot better. Now what I would probably do is tuck that in there. And if we're going to think about gravity, these are probably going to be very close together. And they're not going to be up high, but something like this will definitely work. So just thickening it up as much as I can. I think that possibly one of the things that we have to do now that we're talking about the face is just really enlarge that neck because in the process of doing this by the way I turned off symmetry and just held shift so we wouldn't lose any symmetry when we're doing the move there but like I said in the process of making the body uh, we tend to lose some of the ideas that we have for the head so the neck is something that is going to be important for us to sort of keep in mind. So a longer neck makes this a little bit more interesting. And I'm liking where this is going. Again, it's probably going to change and we're going to be doing some thumbnailing right after this. So we're definitely going to alter some things here when we pick our final design. But I like the big ears. I just want to find I just want to find the right shape for this jaw. You still look in the, a little bit too much like a like a dog in the front and that's not really what I'm looking for. It might be the ears though. It might be the ears. So if we take off the ears just for a, a test here we didn't spend too much time on them. Yeah, see, that looks interesting as well. So I think if we shorten up the ears, I think we'll have something to work towards. Yeah, see, that looks a lot more feline. The down ears really just didn't accent it properly. Oh, there we go. See? There we go. Now, this is looking interesting. While still in keeping with the same sort of design idea that his ears are pretty important. There we go. I'm going to delete hidden here. I'm going to dynamite that. But that definitely looks interesting. And I'll just go ahead and inflate it so we have things to play around with. So moving that around. Like so. Separation on the head. I like that little piece in the middle, but I'm going to take it off for now. And I think I can just add some really thick plating to this. And then we can just play around with uh, the thumbnailing stage to really nail it down. So it's still looking sort of feline. I like it. And uh, it's still pretty aggressive. So I'm going to grab my mask lasso here. I'm going to mask off the front, front of, the, of the top of the face here and then just move it like so. Prepare it for the inevitable thickness pass that we're going to be adding to everything. So something like that, or definitely pretty good. So we're going to stop here and uh, I will see you guys. As you saw in the previous lessons, uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble settling with a face that I like. Sometimes I like one thing and I like the other, but at some point you have to commit. But it's important not to commit too early. I mean, we worked on it for 20 minutes. It's not like 
you know, we've been days and days and days designing. So we can't expect too much of ourselves as far as a result goes. But I think that once you get to something that you're comfortable with, you need to be able to improve upon it. See all it has to offer you. So here's what I'm going to propose. Basically, I want to go ahead and uh, separate the head from the body. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and go to Subtool, Split, Split Hidden. So now the face is its own thing. Let's go ahead and uh, Dynamesh just the face as it is. And then we can uh, Dynamesh the body as it is. And then basically what that's, that's going to do is it's just going to cap off the neck and the head for us. And while we have a separation there, it doesn't really matter. It's just so that we have uh, control over this and don't have to worry about the body. Okay? So, what I think is an interesting way of working is using morph targets and layers. So, let me show you what I mean. Let's say we have this face here, okay? Let's not focus on the actual uh, face itself. Let's use the outline. Uh, I do believe this is the outline thin uh, mad cap. So as you can see, it's just an outline. We can see where we're going, and uh, it's pretty interesting. So what if we just put the head over here, right? Hit Shift S for a snapshot. And let's say we have a morph target. So let's go down here and say morph target. And uh, delete morph target and store. There we go. So this is stored. Let's go ahead now and actually play around with this. So we can do some pretty dynamic things like using the uh, the snake hook brush here and just really free ourselves from any kind of limitation. And we can just try our best to find a different looking design with maybe some more elements, you know, some more horns, different things to look at. For example, something like this. Obviously, from the same base, right? But we have changed it. And you can see from the side, it's going to look interesting as well. You know, we can make these sharper if we like. We can do a whole bunch of things. But let's say that this is one design, right? Okay. So, what do we do now? Well, we can snapshot that and say, okay, we'll keep that as it is. But what if we want to keep this? Well, we need a layer, and for that, we got to go over here up to layer and just create that layer. Okay? Now, this layer is on record, and that means that everything that I do from this point on uh, is going to be affecting the mesh. So, what I can do now is sort of smooth this out, okay, for example, uh, as something that we can do, and maybe give him a stronger jaw. Maybe make everything a little bit bigger. You can see it changes from the side quite a bit, interestingly enough. And then we can now use something, say we can pull this up high like this. We'll make it fairly fairly different if possible. So this is a little bit too crazy, but uh, let's say that we have just a carapace head like this, okay? So an example like that. We can now, using our morph brush, if you go to morph here, where are you? There you go. We can go to our morph brush and start resetting some of this to sort of come back as an in between both of these things. So you can see that really quickly with layers and morph targets, we've done yet another iteration on the head. And that's a fairly interesting way, an easy way, in fact, of just getting some quick design going. So you can thin things out really quickly here, just do a whole bunch of things and you don't really have to worry about the the shapes themselves. If you want to keep the outlines, that's fine. But for example, you can well what you can do is you can just morph everything back down here. And then on this area here you can start turning the layer opacity off. You can even invert the layer and see what you get. So you see, again, very quickly, and with a few more tweaks, so let's say, oh, let's go ahead and go back to that layer there. We lost it on record mode. And you can save these in various layers as you see fit, okay? But for me, what I'm looking for is sort of a more 
interesting zygomatic. I'm looking for a more interesting shape for the whole face itself. Basically going to thin it out like that. Pull this back in. And there we go. And if I want, I can morph just the bottom here and see how it looks. You see how easy it is to just get some in-betweens on our design? It's really, really cool. So this is a technique that I've used for both bodies and just faces when trying to design creatures that I'm having a little bit of trouble with. And again, you can do the same thing from the side and uh, just alter things as you see fit. And then you can use the morph brush to bring some areas back and some some you don't bring back. So something like this, then you'll have yet another iteration similar to this, more closer to this, still different from all the others. And then obviously when you look at this in a, in a clay form, you can see that it's actually pretty interesting. So that's basically what I wanted to show you guys as far as a design and iteration. In fact, I think that we're going to pick this face here because I like how that looks. We can add lots of teeth down here. And I wouldn't have been able to get to this face if I hadn't played around with all of these, right? So let's go ahead and, uh, and stop here. And I'll see you guys in the next lesson where we'll go with this face that we picked and we'll get ready to continue working on our body. So 